Okay, so I propose we start because I see there are no there's no more people uh, joining us anymore. So that means that we're a nice and small, cozy group. Um, welcome everybody um, to this final um, webinar uh, in the Foster Open Air Open Access Week series. Um, this webinar is the format of an of a Ask Me Any Ask Us Anything. Um, session so uh, what we who we have present here is a couple of people um, who are part of the foster open science project and um, basically what what's going to happen is that they're open for any type of questions that you have about either the project or about any of the specific um, of the specific services or tools that we offer so um, as you can see on the on the, the the menti screen there's there's a room for general questions but there's also uh, room for questions about the toolkit and about the portal. Um, we have with us Helena Brinken from um, Göttingen University, Irina Kuchma from Eiffel, um, Matteo Cancelleri from Open University and Nancy Pontica, uh, also from Open University and CORE, um, who are more responsible, who, who will be able to answer your technical questions. Uh, as we are really not a lot of people, um, you can either, uh, what I would suggest is that uh, either you type your question in the chat uh, here in the go to meeting uh, room, or you just unmute yourself and talk. We're not a lot of people, so I think this can uh, this can work. So, um, are there already any questions right now? No, I see you're all still a little bit quiet. So uh, maybe I, I, if I remember, recall correctly, Helena, you had something prepared, right? Um. Yes. Uh, okay. I. Um, I've made you a presenter, and that means that you can yeah. easily share your screen. Okay, so I can um, start with the um, presentation. I just need to check how it works. This sharing the screen. Yes, on on top you should see the yeah you should see the option of sharing your own screen. So. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. we can see your screen. Yeah. And um, also, I forgot to say that this, re this session will also be recorded. So at uh, one point next week, you will receive the recording of this as well. Okay, so Helena, go mm -hmm. ahead. The floor is yours. So, um, yeah, I will just uh, yeah give you an overview uh what has been done so far in the FOSTER project and um, then it's maybe easier to uh, find some questions that you want to ask to us. So, um, well, this um, it is EU funded and for two years, and the aim is to achieve a cultural change towards open science and to raise awareness, and uh, in particular, in particular, to foster practical information of open science. And how we try to achieve this is by uh, giving training. So we have traditional online, uh, offline, uh, face to face events uh, and we offer online courses and uh, we have this uh, web portal fosteropenscience.eu i'm sure you've seen it and what we do on the portal so uh, my colleagues uh, created this uh, open science taxonomy to define open science and we collect um, materials that um, are related to open science topics and categorize them according to this taxonomy. Um, so you can reuse them and learn about open science. Um, apart from that, we have um, just launched uh, 10 new online courses that are freely accessible. And um, so here you can see an overview of these courses. So what is open science, best practices, open access publishing, peer review, licenses and so on and um, these courses they really try to answer your burning questions and how to put open science into practice so for example how to avoid predatory journals how to find uh, the right journal things like that um, so what we also try to do is to um, give relevant um, discipline specific examples where relevant. So um, we have some partner institutions, um, um, for example, the Center for Genomic Regulation and uh, GESIS uh, for social science and CRGs for um, the life sciences. 
and uh, they really made sure that we have discipline specific tools and uh, examples in these courses. Um, then the courses are interactive so uh, after each course you have a quiz and you can get what we did is we uh, developed five different learning paths um, and so these pathways are recommendations um, of yeah an order of courses that you can take to for example to become an open access author or an open peer reviewer and um, so here's just an three examples uh, how these pathways could look like so for example for the open access also the, you would take the course um, what is open science um, um, what is open like open access publishing um, research data management and sharing and uh, open licenses um, Apart from these training courses, um, we also follow a train the trainers approach to multiply our training forces and to really have a sustainable approach of giving training. So in April, we conducted the Open Science Trainer Bootcamp in Barcelona um, to build a community of trainers, so to bring the uh, trainers, open science trainers together and to support them with um, a structure and um, system um, like our portal which you will see later um, and um, also with uh, resources so we for example we created the open science training handbook which is really a guide uh, for trainers on how to forward knowledge on open science and this resource was written by the community for the community and here you can see our team of authors so the idea was to bring together the um, yeah, experienced open science trainers um, to write a book and share their experiences. Um, they came together for one week for five days uh, in February in Hanover in Germany for book sprint and uh, Foster provided the writing environment and yeah they came and wrote the book. Well this handbook is uh, licensed with the Creative Commons Zero license so we really try to um, make the reuse as easy as possible and it is supposed to be a living handbook so it's open for contributions and improvement and also um, for translations. Um, so this is just an overview of some of the topics represented in the handbook. Um, so also similar to the open science uh, courses you've seen before. Um, again open concepts principle open access um, but also policies licenses uh, research data and so on and uh, what the authors did they um, try to answer um, to all of these topics are uh, the question like what is it like why is this topic important and if you organize a training session on this topic what should be the learning objectives so what is the key components of the knowledge and skills and um, yeah, what are questions and common misconceptions that arise in training sessions so that uh, you can find an answer um, yeah, that helps you to answer these questions in your trainings. Um, then there's a theoretical part on learning and training like how to prepare your workshop, uh, tips how to execute your workshop and also how to reflect on your workshop. And then uh, also, yeah, very practical aspects like what to keep in mind using, um, yeah, an event in your institution and with a long checklist. And um, the last chapter of the handbook is, um, um, yeah, you could find example training outlines. So there are 24 exercises described um, in detail and with a description um, how conduct this exercise but also how to adapt it to your purpose and one example is for example the open science cafe um, created by Lieber um, which is a card game that enables um, yeah discussion and dialogue between different stakeholders and yes you can find that online on our website to print out and use for your own context so um, I think that's it for now from uh, yeah, from my side and um, yeah, I'm happy to answer all questions about um, the 
Open Science Training Handbook, as I was the one who coordinated that. And uh, we have Irina and Nancy who um, participated, like uh, had main parts in creating the um, courses. And uh, Matteo also, who's uh, yeah, working a lot on the platform. So um, yeah, please ask us anything, so. Okay, thank you very much, Helena. Um, so yes, are there any questions about this training handbook or about the process or, or uh, any other uh, training related questions? Maybe I can also add uh, one more development uh, that we're launching. Uh, we're launching a uh, system for uh, moderated learning because now those courses exist as uh, free online one hour courses, self learning ones uh, on Adapt Portal. Now we're setting up uh, a Moodle platform for e learning courses and we'll be happy to collaborate with others who are interested in. Uh, co-developing and co-running open science courses with us. Uh, so it's a call to the audience if you're interested. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Irina. So is anybody in the audience uh, interested in, in, in joining or, or uh, participating in this discussion? Maybe if, if you are, you can uh, you can drop your, your uh, email in the private chat to us or, or just indicate so in the chat. Okay. Um, so there's a question from Garrett um, in the chat, and it says, um, "Okay, hold on. I'm just going to read it. Um, the resources available in the Foster Toolkit are excellent and really great uh, go-to guide for both researchers and those of us supporting open science. Thank you for that. Um, regarding the section on preprints, do you think it would be it would help if there was a distinction made between preprint manuscripts?" Uh, what used to be known as uh, working papers and author accepted manuscripts, the peer reviewed but unpublished version. Thanks a lot for your question, Garrett. Uh, Maya Kulpa, because I, I was one of, of the authors of this course. I, I think it, it, it's a very valid point, sir, and uh, we'll see how we can address that. Thanks a lot. Irina, I think you're dropping. No, I just said, said oh, thank sorry. you. <laughs> okay. And then I muted myself. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get that. Um, so there's a question on the handbook. Um, and well, it's like uh, if the handbook is ongoing work um, or is it somehow finished? So we can say that um, like the English version is like a yeah a finished version that is ready to use. Um, but we are still looking, f uh, yeah, or happy to receive uh, any contributions. So if there are changes, would like to add anything, we are really happy to receive that. For example, also um, the collection of um, exercises um, that it should it can grow constantly that would be very welcome and at the moment we are um, working on so um, it's currently translated into Portuguese into Spanish and to Greek so far and so of course because um, it's also like it's um, very easy to adapt and um, to add things we that these the people um, translating the handbook they add also um, aspects that are relevant for example for their region so um, yeah in, in this respect it's ongoing work I hope this answers your question hi there um, this is Joy Davidson I'm um, one of the partners in Foster and involved mostly with the toolkit and I just wanted to to also follow up with what Arena was saying and um, suggest that uh, now that the courses are out there um, and people are making use of them if you do have any ideas about using them in a classroom setting or for students 
or in any other kind of a way, we would certainly be happy to um, hear from anybody who would like to think about how to use it and to get involved and to help you to do that. So please, if you do have any ideas and want to discuss them, get in touch with us through the Foster channels and we'll be delighted to help out. And just to also pick up on what uh, Helene was saying about translation of the materials into different languages, we are also looking at getting the toolkit courses translated. Um, some work is underway to put some of the courses into Arabic, actually. Um, so if anybody else has any interest in that, please get in touch as well. I think only today we had an e we received an email about somebody who wanted to translate in Brazilian Portuguese. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. That sounds great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, Arya, if if there aren't any other questions about this training handbook, uh, I mean, I mean, if if you have any questions later, just feel free to drop them in chat. But maybe Nancy or Matteo, if you're around, you can do a quick show of the portal. Is that possible? Hello. Hi, Nancy. Can you I can hear me? This is Nancy. Yeah. Uh, I can do a quick show of the portal and maybe Matteo can talk a little bit about the learning paths and the budgets. What do you think, Matteo? Hi, hello. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I will start with the portal and then you I will uh, um, yes. you will move on with the budgets and the uh, and the learning paths. So I'm just going to share my screen and I hope that I do this right. Can okay, you see my screen now? Portal is the foster open site. It takes a little bit. Yes, yeah, so we can see your screen now, thanks. to load uh, one of the important uh, parts of the portal because in there uh, who want or you about the topic that you can Nancy, is it possible your connection is not very stable? Because you drop out. Can you hear me well now? Sorry, I don't know what to do, to be honest. Yeah, you dropped you dropped for a, for a moment there, but, uh, but now I hear you fine again. Well. And slides in case they want to learn about something or they want to create uh, content for a training and they want to get ideas and uh, they will also be able to find other documents such as pdf documents or links to youtube videos about uh, all the topics relating to open science you can see that the economy and of course uh, the purpose of the taxonomy is to make you understand uh, the various concepts around the um, large open science umbrella term but uh, nonetheless each of these uh, taxonomy terms um, is a clickable item so open access a lot when I'm about to presentation for uh, new things that come up and see how others uh, treat uh, the open access environment in the uh, in the open science. Um, can you hear me well still, Gwen, 
Well, I mean, for me, you're dropping, you're dropping now and then. So it's like you, we have the silences. So I'm not sure. I think it's something to do with your connection. Is that possible? Because Mateo has uh, texted me the same thing. Uh, yeah. Mateo, would you? Should I, should I try to mind? take over? Maybe that's not a bad idea, Mateo. Pardon? Shall okay. I uh, make you presenter? If you like, yes. Yeah. Okay, so Matteo, you should be able to share your screen. And in the meantime, um, there is a question from Yadraka, um, who asks, um, or, or who said that, that they're, they're working at the Department of Information Sciences of the University of Sadar, uh, and they're trying to build competencies for data lab librarians. And um, Yadranka is wondering if any list of competencies or guidelines in this direction exists already. Um, and she will appreciate any suggestions. So I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Joy, that's a question for you. Uh, yeah, I, I would recommend there's a couple of RDA working groups that are looking into this. So um, I think one of them is involved with the Edison project, the European um, Edison project. They have some useful resources. Um, maybe the best thing for me to do would be to um, get in touch with you offline and share some links um, if you want to. Um, share your details. I can I can give you uh, an email offline. Okay, that's a great idea. And uh, Matteo, we can see your screen. Yeah, and and, and your Skype chat. <laughs> just so you just so oh, you know. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that's what I asked to Nancy. Not, nothing wrong yet, but <laughs> okay. So let's go back to to here. Tell me if you can listen properly. But yeah. anyway, Nancy was giving you an introduction about Foster. So we are, it's now nearly four years that we have the portal. So the portal is quite well established. And Nancy was showing you about resources. So the basic, the basic building component of uh, the Foster portal are training resources. There are now nearly 3,600 training resources in the portal. Uh, some of them are really high quality, some of them are articles and uh, links, presentations, some of them are YouTube videos. We have we have quite a lot of, of uh, different resources that spread more or less around all the concept of open science and also the good thing is that the project on uh, his lifetime go also collaboration for uh, uh, text and data mining, from the Open Minded Project and uh, research, Responsible Research and Innovation from the Fit for RRI project. So the portal started to be, to collect way more information and also there's lots of uh, crossovers between these topics that make the resources quite interesting. So the evolution, the next, the second part of the life of the portal has moved on uh, creating high quality courses and recognize the and certify when a course is completed so we we worked a lot and we recently released them we released uh, the badges and the learning path so as you can see i would like to log in so if i log in with my account you can see that i am a really keen learner because I have already so many badges. So this is how a badge look like. You will receive a badge when you complete a course. So these badges are all implementing the open badges standard, so they can be exported everywhere. So it's a recognition of you completing a course in Foster, but also there are some specific badge that instead require, requires you to complete a learning path. That is the that is a nice way of creating specialization. So we these are our these are our learning paths for now. That's the one we release. They are mostly collaborating with the courses made on the toolkit. And these learning paths look like this. Look like this. So as you can see, there is a list of courses and then there is a completion on the courses because i'm a really keen student i have lots of completion but 
in general you will have you will keep can keep track of uh, the completion rate of your courses and you can see how many courses do you need to receive a certain certification and then after you completed you will receive for example the open p reviewer badge so i think more or less i went on a quick overview nancy is there anything i missed that you wanted to say hi can you hear me yes what i would wanted to show is the events page because um, in the events people are going to be able to get informed about new events so if you can pull it up in case if i share my screen this is going to bring like more traffic on my um on my uh, internet and in the events page users can see the past and the uh forthcoming events and this can be used in uh, different ways for example if you would like to attend one of the open science events then you can go there and uh, also if you plan to create an event and uh, you would like to see what others have done in similar events then you can go uh, again in this page to spy on the events um, on the top of the page you can see that we have a map with uh, the geographical uh, location of the events that took place and between this map and uh, the uh, the actual events you can see that we have our trainers directory and uh, the trainers directory is composed of uh, the foster um, uh, group, uh, project members and also others who are specializing in the field for example the people who participated in the boot camp in the foster boot camp that uh, helen explained uh, earlier to you and we we try to uh, maintain this uh, speakers trainers directory uh, updated with a lot of information because we want it to be useful for to you the users in case uh, there is a user who wants to find a speaker to invite a speaker um, then in the directory you can find um, various informations about speakers such as the field that they specialize in um, their location their topics of interest but more importantly the languages that they speak and they can present uh, um, the uh, information that uh, like the various presentations on this um, and uh, apart from that what i would like to show at the very end mateo is the news area because in the news area people are not only going to be able to see um, get updated about them uh, various things that uh, happen around the foster portal but uh, also they would be able to subscribe to the foster uh, newsletters and be the ones who receive um, all the updates and the news about foster um, very soon and um, if uh, you go on the very top of the page as you can see right now you can see the, var the previous uh, um, issues of uh, the, the newsletter So that is all, I think. Um, Nancy, maybe you could also show the trainers corner. That might be also interesting. Oh, yes. So what uh, we have also created, that's a very good uh, comment, uh, Helen. What we have also created, and this is uh, a work that was done primarily by Helen, my apologies for forgetting that, is that we created the trainers content. So it is a location for all the users who want to uh, use um, ready images or uh, slides or those beautiful graphs that uh, Helen uh, showed you in um, her uh, presentation. And all these are uh, downloadable uh, materials uh, for, um, and uh, they have an open license and everyone can use it. And I see that Matteo is a little bit yes. confused because he doesn't know what I'm really bad because I don't remember the name of it. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. Great. Good. Yeah. So people will be able to not only to access the um, training uh, handbook, but also download um, those pretty images uh, that uh, were uh, created uh, by Gothic and I 
think and correct me if I'm wrong, but also other uh, downloadable uh, materials with open licenses that they can use in their uh, presentations or in general in their workshops. We also have, for example, uh, those um, stickers. We also have uh, the um, banners for Foster. We created the open science taxonomy and the rest of the taxonomies that are hosted in the project. And this relates to the other projects as well that Matteo has said, uh, the Fit for RRI and the Open Minded. And the taxonomies are now um, downloadable in an RDF um, uh, format. So in case you would like to focus only on specific areas of the taxonomy or in case the taxonomy does not fit the specific purposes of your specific use case and you would like to shape it around so that it fits better your purposes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't see any new questions from the audience appear in the chat. Um, so that means that I can assume that everything is quite clear. Um, but if you do have any questions about any other foster, uh, foster services and tools, this might be the moment to, to ask them and feel free to just unmute yourself. Uh, we're not many people, so we can, we can easily just talk instead of typing. Okay, nobody really has any questions anymore. That's a that's a good sign, I guess. <laughs> that means that, that the fossil presenters uh, did a good job and that everything is clear from the portal. Uh, in any case, if you have any questions uh, afterwards, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and um, we will distribute this uh, the recordings of this uh, of this session and uh, other relevant information to you somewhere in the next weeks. So um, thank you very much for attending this session and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for those of you who were with us for all week uh, during this uh, Open Access uh, Week series of trainings. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen, also for organizing this uh, whole week of trainings. You're welcome. <laughs>